Genesis chapter 1, we read how God, our awesome and wondrous Creator, created everything in the heavens and on the earth. And He looked and He saw that it was good. He created the light from which all life derives its source. He created air, water and nutrients and their complex cycles upon which all life is supported. He created the soil and all of its living organisms, both visible and invisible. He created plants bearing fruit and seed after their own kind. And He created animals. And finally, He created man. Everything He created was good and productive and fruitful. Nothing the Lord created was without purpose. And all of creation fitted together in a maze of complex interconnected relationships which are still trying to be fathomed by man to this day. An interesting part of the creation story is in Genesis chapter 2 when God made a food garden in the east of Eden for Adam and Eve. Genesis chapter 2 verse 8 says, and the Lord God planted a garden toward the east in Eden, and there He placed the man whom He had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God caused to grow every tree that is pleasing to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In verse 15, Then the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to work and care for it. God created the very first garden and put Adam in that garden to work and care for it. God Himself is the first and master farmer. In that garden, God taught Adam everything he needed to know about his creation, how to work the land and care for it. So what is so important about this to growing vegetables? Well, quite frankly, everything. If we understand that God first created all forms of life and the structures on which life are founded, then we must acknowledge that He has a way of doing things that work in the best way possible. We all know that the very best person to teach you how to use something is its creator. The same applies in agriculture. We need to go back to the author of creation and observe the way He design plants to grow within their created environment and be humble enough to learn from the master farmer. God's creation still demonstrates all of the attributes of God's garden in the east of Eden. He never inverts the soil. There is a continuous blanket or mulch on the top of the ground made up of many layers of gradually decomposing plant materials like leaves, branches, fruits and manure on the surface of the ground and a great biodiversity of species. All we need to do is follow the ways He has shown us since the beginning of all time. Within these demonstrated boundaries, we try to emulate as closely as possible what our Creator has shown us to do through minimal soil disturbance, keeping a two and a half centimeter thick blanket cover on top of the ground and practicing rotations. But this story is far more than just a technological practice. God designed for man to live in a real, tangible relationship with himself and would come to the garden to walk and talk with Adam in the cool of the day. Why would the creator of the universe, the God of all, do that? Because he loves mankind and his desire was to have a created being who would according to his own free will choose to have a heartfelt relationship with him. No animal or any other earthly created being has this choice. When man sinned and ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, against the Lord's instruction, he broke that covenant of relationship. And as a result of that, Adam was kicked out of the garden. The land was cursed and man was cursed with hard labor, sweat and weed growth. None of these curses had been a part of a farming lifestyle prior to the fall. However, the worst thing that took place was that sin now separated mankind from God 
and he no longer had this privilege of a divine relationship with him, which was God's ultimate objective. The great news is that Jesus came to break every curse and to give to everyone that believes in him the right to be called children of God and once again to be reconciled to the Father in a real relationship. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 says, For He delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by Him all things were created, both in the heaven and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created by Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. He is also the head of the body, the church, and He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that He Himself might come to have first place in everything. For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in Him, and through Him to reconcile all things to Himself, having made peace through the blood of His cross. Through Him, I say, whether things on earth or in things in the heavens. Jesus, who is called the second Adam, has made a way for us to have the ban lifted so that we can once again enter into the garden in the east of Eden and experience a life in relationship with our Creator. This is ultimately what we want to see happen in all of our farming God's Way gardens, be that at field or small nutrition garden scale. Lives reconciled to a meaningful relationship with the Lord and where His bountiful blessings overflow in the garden. This Farming God's Way vegetable resource advocates techniques that are proven and simple to allow for successful implementation amongst the poor. Farming God's Way is not just a technology, but a well-balanced biblical management and technological solution for the agricultural domain. Equipping the poor to come out of poverty with what God has put in their hands and revealing the fullness of Jesus' promised abundant life. The Word of God is paramount to breakthrough in people's lives. And I exhort you to thoroughly work through the six Farming God's Way Biblical Keys as is found in the DVD series and the Trainer's Reference Guide whilst teaching this material. John chapter 6, verse 27. Do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man shall give to you. And in verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. The management keys are just as important and include doing things on time, to high standards, with minimal wastage, and with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Don't neglect these essential elements. The technological keys include no plowing, 100% cover with God's blanket, ensuring biodiversity through rotations, through relay and cover cropping. God's master plan was that mankind would live in a divine relationship with Himself and follow in all of His ways. Through Farming God's Way, we are encouraging people not to follow a system, but rather a father, creator, and the master farmer. And what is really important is that we keep to the principles of doing what we see our Father doing.